Man, it's special going back there. If I'm playing or if I'm just visiting, it's always special. Um, it's my second home. You know what I mean? And if it's 45 minutes away from my school right now, you know, there's IU fans everywhere. So, um, you know, I'm just blessed and honored to go be able to go back as much as I do. Well, last year, they gave you a um, it's an amazing film. For them to treat me the way that they do, um, after only being there for three years, it feels like I've been there all my life. And for them to do to treat me the way they do is just, uh, you know, there's no words for it. I'm a loss for it. So it's just a blessing and an honor to be a part of something bigger than myself, uh, like the, the, IU, the IU culture and the IU uh, family. You know what I mean? And, uh, to be a part of that, when you're a part of it, you're a part of it for the rest of your life. So um, uh, it's an honor. I know there's no timetable on your return, but Jock said you're slowly kind of stepping it up, ramping it up a little bit. How, how's the progress? It's good, you know what I mean? Um, by God's grace, it wasn't as serious as it could have been. Um, you know, but I'm taking my time getting back, not rushing, you know what I mean? Doing what I can, um, trying to stay in shape at the same time. And, you know, um, when I'm ready, I'll come back. I know when I'm ready. How much did that kill you sitting on the bench having to watch you and like, being the competitor you are? Oh, it kills you a lot. Uh, it does, but at the end of the day, it's a part of basketball. You know, people get injured all the time. Um, you know, but it doesn't define who you are. So I'm um, just going to continue to keep getting better and continue to keep um, getting better mentally. I think that's the biggest thing for me is why I'm sitting over there, um, you know, kind of visualizing myself in the game, and, um, things I would need to do in order to be prepared for certain situations and what I would do at, the, at a certain point in time in the game. So. Um, it benefits me, you know what I mean? So it might have been a blessing in disguise. What did you come in for training? Um, like, I'm not sure, you would have to ask Bill, but it's around like 212, 5% uh, body fat. So I think it's pretty good. I had to give up Oreos. What did you have to give up that, that killed you? Bread. Bread? Bread was tough. Uh -huh. Bread is everywhere. If you think about it, it's everywhere. And where you turn, bread is there. Is it, is it workouts? Is it diet? What, what's, what percentage would you put on each one? I think um, a lot of it has to do with diet because I work out every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My, my, my occupation is working out. So um, I think a lot of it is diet. 80% diet, 20% uh, training. Um, the, the biggest thing is what you put in your body. What you put in your body, you get out of it. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm doing a better job of being right. You said you got a little bigger than you wanted to last year, right? Yeah, a little. <laughs> a lot bigger than I wanted to, but, um, you know, it's a part of the process of me just learning what I need to do and how my body works and what size I need to be to be at in order to be effective. Thanks, man. As an observer, what did you see out of these guys in Miami, especially from the rookies? How did they perform in your eyes? Um, Phenomenal. You know what I mean? Um, you know, they faced adversity very well. You know, um, they went on that little run in the fourth quarter. Um, you know, Coach, Coach Vaughn didn't call a timeout, which was perfect for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and they handled it very well. You know what I mean? And uh, Devin Marble didn't play the whole game and came in and hit a couple big shots. You know what I mean? Um, Elfred came in and played very well for us. Uh, and Aaron did the same thing, you know what I mean? Dwayne came in and made a big layup in overtime. I mean, the guys that didn't play the whole game were ready, you know what I mean? And it just shows how, how deep we are and how deep we can be and how effective we can be if everybody's, you know, locked in. First and only. So was there ever a second school where some other schools finally wise up where you that came in late where you Yeah, once the one yeah, after I was two years in. Indiana. <laughs> no, um, I'm just playing. But I, no, there wasn't really any other school. Um, Indiana was Coach Creighton offered me after seeing me play one time in high school. And um, towards the end of my senior year I only really had them as a college offer, uh, college offer. Uh, 
only went on one visit because that was my only visit. And I didn't tell them that at the time. <laughs> but uh, afterwards, I, I, I pretty much broke it down to Coach Cream. Like, look, I didn't tell you this, but like, if y'all didn't recruit me, I, was, I wouldn't know where I was going. So I would have probably walked on somewhere. Um, but again, it's just a blessing in disguise, man. So. Did he offer you at your junior sophomore year? Um, my senior year in high school. What was the most uh, impressive Hoosier turnout last year? Because I'm thinking of one. I wonder if you're thinking the same thing. All well, the, the first cities. game was good, but remember the snowstorm in Brooklyn? Oh, wow. That was crazy. Snowstorm in Brooklyn. There was probably nobody at the game, but there was a good amount of Hoosier fans there. <laughs> so they, they come in and sleep. Snow, the city was closed. Rain. Yeah, the city was closed. And there was like 100 yeah. Hoosier fans in the building. And yeah. then I think they left when the game started. Mm -hmm. But we also, we also went to like Portland.